We are now in part 2 of the physical layer and media. Let's have a look at the outcomes first. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to understand analog and digital signals, know various physical layer media, and finally, we will compare various physical media. We will start the session with signals. It is a function that represents the variation of a physical quantity with respect to time. So, with respect to time, we can see the variation of a physical quantity and that can be represented as a signal. We will take an example. The variation in room temperature of a city in one day, that is 24 hours, can be represented using signals. That is, the variation, that is this variation of a physical quantity. The physical quantity here is the temperature of a city and with respect to time, that is in one day, that is 24 hours. So, we can represent this as a signal. And what are the two kinds of signal we have? Number one, analog signal and number two, digital signal. We will see analog signal first and then we will move on to the digital signal. Analog signal, it is the signal that can take any value in the defined range. Please note any value. For example, all real life signals are analog in nature. Say the colors we see, the heat or the temperature we feel, the sounds we produce or hear, all these signals are analog in nature. And that is why we call all real life signals are analog in nature. Let's have an example. Say this is an example analog signal and this analog signal is continuous in nature. For example, we have a signal which is represented as x of t and this is in y axis and the time is in x axis because any signal that is with respect to time. So, the signal x of t can take any value between minus 7 to plus 7 in this example. So, here is minus 7 and here is plus 7. So, this signal takes any value between minus 7 and plus 7 and this is a continuous signal. For example, if we take this is point A and this is point B. Between point A and point B, there can be any value and there can be infinite values. And if we have infinite values in the defined range, then we call this signal as an analog signal. On the other hand, we have digital signal. It is the signal that can take on of the finite values at a given time. At a given time, if it can take only finite values, then it will be a digital signal. Because in digital signal, we discretize both time and magnitude, that is size or quantity. Let's have an example now for digital signal. And this is an example digital signal. And as usual, x of t is the signal which is in y axis and the time which is in x axis. That signal x of t can take only one value out of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 for any discrete value of time. So, for any discrete value of time, if it can take only one value, then it is a digital signal. In other words, let's say this is point A and let's say this is point B. Between point A and point B, there may be larger values, but they are finite values. If that is the case, then this signal will be a digital signal. So far, we have seen analog signal and digital signal. Why do we need to deal about signals? Because in physical layer media, we are ultimately focusing on signals. We have wired media as well as wireless media. In wired or in wireless, the physical layer device is focusing on the signals. Say for example, these two are wired media and this is a wireless media. So, in this case, it is a copper cable where it is dealing with electrical signals. This is an example of a fiber optic cable. It deals with light pulses or light signals. On the other hand, this is a wireless medium and it deals with the microwave signals because in all the cases we are dealing with signals. So, we have learnt about the analog signals and the digital signals. Let's have a comparison over this copper media, fiber optic media and this wireless media. So, we have media here. This is copper cable, this is fiber optic cable and this is wireless media. And these two are an example of wired media and this is wireless. We will see what are the physical components in the copper cables. We have UTP and STP. It means unshielded twisted pair cable or shielded twisted pair cable. In the upcoming lecture, we are going to practically see the unshielded twisted pair cable and the shielded twisted pair cable. A coaxial cable is an example of a copper cable. 
So coaxial cable is mainly used for audio or video communication. And an example is we can see this coaxial cable that connects our set of box with the dish antenna, a mic set as a coaxial cable. And we need connectors like a connectors RJ45 kind of connectors for connecting this UTP cable to the computer or to the networking device, coaxial cable connectors we need. And the physical component also include NICs, network interface cards. And in this case, it is a wired network interface card. And this network interface card should also deal with the ports as well as interfaces. And coming to the fiber optic cable, it can be a single mode fiber or a multi mode fiber. A single mode fiber produces single straight path for the light. Whereas a multi mode fiber allows multiple paths for the light. It means there can be dispersion. And we need as usual connectors, NICs, interfaces. And in this case, that fiber optic cable, we need lasers or light emitting diodes as the physical component. Because here it is going to be electromagnetic signal. Whereas here it is going to be light signals. So in the signals part, we can notice that copper cable uses electromagnetic signals whereas fiber optic cable uses light signals. So the signaling method here is there is a light pulse which is 1. If there is no light pulse, it means it is 0. So far we have seen wired media. In wired media, we have seen copper cable and fiber optic cable. Let's have a look at the wireless media. In a wireless media, we need an access point. If you have a mobile phone, you just turn on Wi-Fi in your mobile phone and this Wi-Fi will connect it to your access point and that access point will have a network at the back end. So you will be able to connect to your network using the wireless access points. So we need access points, we need network interface cards and the network interface card here it is going to be different. In the previous cases, these NICs are wired NICs. It's going to convert the physical data into electromagnetics or light signals. Whereas this NIC in wireless media, it is going to convert into radio waves. The signaling method used in wireless media are radio waves. And we need radios in order to generate the radio waves. And we need antennae in order to send and receive. And that's the comparison of various physical media. I hope you are clear with the basics of analog and digital signals. You know the various physical layer media. And you know how to compare various physical layer media. I hope you guys enjoyed the session and thank you for watching.